Welcome to every movie I've ever seen. This is a special Rummaging Through April edition where throughout the month of April I'm going to be reviewing movies that I found at rummage sales. Now, uh, up next we have Sign of, we have Sign of the Otter. The Little Patriot, which I guess I think The Little Patriot is like the real title because I don't know maybe Sign of the Otter wasn't marketable enough because it's it's not really marketable. I feel like this might be like a remake or something else too. It might be another The Little Patriot or movie similar to this. Uh, this is basically a revolutionary era times. Uh, some farmer guy, his his son gets kidnapped by the British and he teamed and he teams up with a Native American to you know find his son and rescue him uh, and that's pretty much the movie it stars it stars Dan Haggerty by the way which apparently he's someone cuz they have his name on the top I don't know, you can kind of see it. There's the writing on it from the rummage sale. But he's not the main character. He is like a secondary character who who uh, teach who briefly trains the main character on how to be in the army. Which interesting. I look at this. I look at this uh, cover. And the cover is interesting after having seen the movie because that's that's obviously uh, Dan Haggerty right there who giving me major Kurt Russell vibes, you know, modern day Kurt Russell vibes, like Guardians of the Galaxy 2 Kurt Russell vibes. But anyway, that's you know Kurt Russell. This this woman next to him, I believe she's in the movie. Uh, she's a nameless Native American woman who is in the camp with, you know, the main Native American woman, I mean the n main Native American guy, this guy, he's the guy who teams up with the main character to track the sun. I don't know who this kid is. I, I, I don't think he appears in the movie. Uh, these three characters don't interact at all. I don't know why this is the cover, uh, but this is very odd. Now, when you look at it, I mean, yeah, they say this is starring Dan Haggerty as the leader of the American rebel forces who teaches Samuel Todd, John Christian, that is our main character, how they exist in a hostile environment. He doesn't really even do that either. He's almost more, he, he almost fits into slightly more of an antagonistic role because at, at a point in the movie, the main character wants to leave to protect his house and, you know, stop the British from attacking his house and rescue his son. And then, but you know, Dan Haggerty is like, no, nah, you can't do that. You, you know, he's going to go AWOL if you do that. Don't do that. I'll arrest you and execute you. So he almost fits into a, like an antagonistic role. But all that's resolved by uh, by the finale when they capture the British fort and, you know, save the day. He's, he, you know, all is forgiven. Uh, so the movie, uh, the movie's fine. Uh, there's nothing, nothing great about it, but then there's nothing inherently uh, bad about it. It's, uh, I want to say, late 90s, maybe mid 90s, you know, family, feel good supposedly thing uh, wasn't too long uh, 90 minutes I think it didn't, didn't feel long you know I've seen movies that have been 70 minutes that have felt way too long so I shouldn't have bumped the camera stand there but yeah I mean I get kind of like 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 Homeward Bound vibes from this although Homeward Bound is a much better movie than this but that's that's what I kind of get I kind of get those vibes, like, it's like something you 
put in, it's like something you uh, put your whole family together, gather your whole family together to get together to watch, supposedly. That's the that's the vibes I get from this movie. There's nothing nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's you know fine, but then you know there's nothing that sticks out about it. It's something you're gonna kind of forget in a little bit. I mean, it's pretty basic. You know, the plot is nothing special at all. You kind of get exactly where things are gonna go. Uh, they really dialed up the British characters to be villains, and not what you see now with British characters playing villains. They're less devious, more incompetent. It's more like comedic take over over the British people, and it and it gets kind of meta at the end too, because you get like the two rich British people at the end of the movie. And they're talking like, you know, I think these rebels, they might actually win the war. Like, well, they're not going to. Even if they do win the war, they're not going to be able to rule the country by themselves. That's ridiculous. Can you imagine that? I suppose it was their attempt at uh, being meta. Because you're supposed to think like, aha, we showed them we ruled the country somewhat okay. For a couple of, For... How long has it been? 200 plus years? 1776... You know, 200 plus years, we did did all right, I, I, I'd say so. Could have done better, uh, anyway. But yeah, the movie was... It's okay. It's odd. I, I, I wonder who Dan Haggerty is. Because when I look at this movie now, they, they really do sell Dan Haggerty's in this. And I don't know if he's supposed to be somebody. I've never heard him. I've never seen anything else that he's been in. Supposedly. I might have seen him in something else. I just don't know it off the top of my head. I'll have to go look after I finish recording this. So, yeah. Uh, that is all I have to say about Sign of the Otter, a.k.a. Little, the Little Patriot.